This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Dun 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 dun. This is a sham. No. No. Nope. Y'all, y'all, y- just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Welcome to DBL. It's Monday, yeah. October 4th. I'm Tori here with my good friends Jeff and Al. Talking so about college, college football. Some, like college football bets this weekend. I yeah. was trying to like jump in and be like, go sports. But yes. it didn't work. So I apologize. <laughs> I tried really hard. All right. Fall is in the air. The leaves are changing colors. The holidays are right around the corner. So here's the question. Is it safe to plan to get together with friends and family this holiday season? Well, here's what Dr. Fauci said on Face the Nation. Take a look. We can gather for Christmas or it's just too soon to tell. 
You know, Margaret, we, it's just too soon to tell. We've just got to concentrating on continuing to get those numbers down and not try yeah. to jump ahead by weeks or months and say what we're going to do at a particular time. Let's focus like a laser on continuing to get those those cases down and we can do it. I'm going to focus like a laser, just like you said. <laughs> Speaking of which, a new survey found that one in eight Americans plan on skipping handing out presents to their family or friends who do not agree with them about COVID-19 and vaccines. All right, let's talk ha family holidays. We're huge with family up here. Mm -hmm. What when you heard him say too soon to tell, didn't your heart break? No, this is what happens. You know, this is, you know, when you put a certain equation in, you're going to get the result that you did. We decided to kind of half open. We decided to kind of half mandate masks. We kind of half did it. And now we kind of have half answers in terms of what we're going to do for holidays. You're going to do it a little different than I will. Jeff will do it because we have no real definitive plan. So I, this is exactly where I expected us to be. Yeah, but it does make me sad, right? Because I don't I wanted to go home for the yeah, holidays. I haven't too. been back to Chicago in a while to mm. see my extended family, right. right? And now do I want to do that and take the chance of going through the airport, crowded plane, crowded malls go to Chicago or is it easier for my family do I want to burden them and say come back out here so for me the, the the family drama with getting the vaccine or Democrat Republican it never existed in my family mm. I don't know where all this came from till I started doing this show is the only time I was like oh my god people are crazy <laughs> you know and yeah. that's when I finally realized what America was fighting about this never existed in my family I'm like never have I heard Pete's a Republican. He ain't yeah. coming over. I, I, I'll tell you, Tori, more than anything, my, my girl and I were walking our dog yesterday, and, uh, you know, we were like, man, no, no Halloween this year. Maybe not even putting a table out because she didn't want to encourage kids to gather at a table. So it's like we're on our second Halloween. Not us. We're fine. We already did our Halloweens and our proms. All the adults that argue about this, this is just kind of play stuff for us. But we'll miss another round of proms, another yeah. Halloween. You know, kids don't need that, right? It's so strange. And, and I'm just saying this. My family's getting older, right? And I, I haven't s seen them in an extended period of time. And I thought, oh, next year, next year, next year. And then not next year. Right. I just know it's disappointing for a lot of you out there as well. Well, let's talk to a former Facebook employee who turned whistleblowers come forward publicly for the first time. She's set to testify to Congress tomorrow. And last night on 60 Minutes, Frances Haugen accused the company Facebook of putting profits ahead of public safety. Take a look at this. If we don't publish angry, hateful, polarizing, divisive content, crickets. We even know our constituents don't like this. But if we don't do these stories, we don't get distributed. Facebook over and over again has shown it chooses profit over safety. It is subsidizing, it is paying for its profits with our safety. I'm hoping that this will have had a big enough impact on the world that they get the fortitude and the motivation to actually go put those regulations into place. Wow. Facebook responded to the 60 Minutes report saying they continue to make improvements to tackle misinformation and harmful content. All right, so let's talk Facebook. Jeff, you've always been big on social media, a critique of it. What do you think hearing her come forward and saying a lot of what you said was happening? There's so many directions I could go with right. this, right? So whew, where do I even Talk start, through it. right? So, what responsibility do they have if it's a free society? Start there. Exactly. So again, so let's start there, yeah. okay? I have a million different lanes I could go down. What is right to Facebook? So again, going back to Democrats and Republicans, a lot of media posted left-leaning things. That's just a fact, right? But if you're on the left, you say, that's not true. That's not true at all. I could, I could hear Chris right now saying, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true, it's true, it's, the media is left. So if you're gonna ban, this is where banning starts coming in. If you're gonna ban things that the right say, you need to ban thing, things that the left say mm. as well. A lot of misinformation, what is misinformation? Depending on what side of the aisle you're on, you might think that's true, but once it happens against you, then you say, well, no, 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 no. We gotta get rid of that content. So I, I don't know where misinformation, that's gonna be tough to, to put a finger on mm. and say, this is wrong, we need to get it out of here, right? Right, I mean, well, what the, when I saw the story, it made me think about you, Jeff, because it, it was talking about not even just misinformation, but anger. Mm. And unfortunately, anger sells. And th it seems like we now ha are looking at, the, for the first time, at a corporation who they're, they're 
profit model is selling anger and that anger is distributed over and over day after day and we've seen from how many manifestos from shooters how many people that have gone and killed their family because they they said that they've been reading people go down these rabbit holes for hours every day and they become indoctrinated so i don't i don't know what responsibility they have to to not do that i don't know if they can say that this post is too angry that seems like it's a very Subjective. slippery slope yeah. so i don't know but it makes perfect sense because i don't think if you put having a great day that's going to do as well in the algorithm as we need to kill all lips well, i think she, that would go viral well that's what this woman is saying and i think obviously i'm all for a free society but clearly regulations in my opinion have to happen at this point if that's we're now selling our sanity that's our that's our sanity as a community and we're selling it for profit is what she said. And so. real quickly, I, I don't think our brains can function with the speed that we're moving with technology. I don't think anyone has the answer. I think it's moving too fast and we're just going to get caught in a whirlwind right now. Oh. That's I what think, we are. Yeah, I think we're there. Interesting. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. You're part of this conversation, of course. Before we go to break, we've got some incredible viral video. It's a plane taking off from a highway in Texas. So it hits a street light. It ends up crashing into a store sign and miraculously no one was hurt. Are we sure that's not just as far as the plane wanted to go? Wait, is that the destination yeah, of the store? Yeah, so I was like, we're good here. <laughs> I just didn't want to feel like crossing the street. Why is the plane on the street, Jeff? I don't know, man. What are they doing? Can I ask you guys something? Will you ever take a prop plane anywhere? I see Absolutely so many of not. these accidents in prop plane. Am I saying that right? Prop yes. planes? Yeah, propeller. That's, propeller? That's the root word. Yeah, it, it just sounds like a lawnmower. And so that engine just doesn't seem like it's enough to keep me in the sky. I, I'm sure you've done. Have yeah, you been in one Jeff's of those? No, you got, no, I haven't. I haven't. Would you? I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of flying. I only do those things like to conquer my fears. Check out one of those like the sky riding people. And like there was a couple that did a gender reveal that went bad because they tried to let pink smoke out and then it ended gender up in the golf mix. Man. Yeah. So I don't know. They just don't seem that stable to me. Prop, Case in point. Prop planes. If you're a prop plane pilot, please. Right in. I was trying to do another P. Coming up on what? That's good. Coming up on DBL, he's one of the toughest sharks in business. Mark Cuban is here. Will Jeff's product pitch win him over, or should he stick to his day job? And can you guess how many times a day Americans check their phones? The answer may surprise you. That's coming up next. Closed captioning provided by. Okay, so going back to the Facebook thing, I could have stayed on that subject. Please, well, we should stay actually should have. Um, so when it comes, when it go, when it comes to like profiting and monetizing, how many viewers you get, people want the viewership, right? So they're going to put something that's the most yes, divisive, yes. right? So people click on it, and even if people hate watch it, they're still getting the click, and that's where we are at right now in society. So my thing was always like, why don't you take responsibility for your own social media, right? You need the driver's license, you need to register to vote or something, pay your taxes, then you get a social media license. And it eliminates all the bots and misinformation, right? Because now you have to stand up for whatever you're putting out there. Also, if you're paying Kim Kardashian X amount because she has a hundred million followers. Right. If you take the bots out, she might have 75 million followers. Okay. But if you're big business, why wouldn't you want to take those bots out so you're paying because people you, to endorse them less? Because if you're big business and you're trying to attract advertisers, let's say I own Twitter. I'm Jack Dorsey. So I own Twitter and I know between you, me and you, my vice president, we know that we say we have a hundred million uh, active users, but it's probably close to the 61 million. You know, but right. the rest are bots. But when I'm going to an advertiser, I want to be like, hey, you got to advertise with us. We have a hundred million. I, if I, if if we get rid of the bots, if what? we get rid of the trolls, we might purge our our audience by half. But if you're paying for that, aren't you like, I don't want to pay you for half of your uh, followers are bots. I don't want to pay you for that advertising. Right, but if you, yeah, but uh, like, I don't care what you want. I want you to pay me. Right. When you, when you sign up with me and you realize you're not getting the profit that you want, that's the difference between the Kardashian things. When they post something, it sells out in minutes. So they can say, if because it's a hundred million. Right, exactly. Right? They, I think they do have legitimate followers because they've been around for so long. But I do think a lot of times when you see people's accounts and we've seen people that are, we know, and you're like, well, right. so-and-so has 35 million followers and you look and they, the post has 80 likes. You're like, okay, those are definitely bots because of the ratio. So you can kind of tell where they're bots and where they're not. But I think I, the, the trolls and just misinformation from legitimate people that are on video saying, 
you know, COVID nineteen is a hoax. Like right now. Maybe yeah. those, maybe those people need Somebody to be silenced now, because it? it does cost oh. people their lives. Right, and who's putting that? Welcome back to DBL. And just to let you know, as of this moment, Facebook and Instagram are both not working. So interesting Probably to see. Probably from if this, what I said. Yes, yeah, definitely what Jeff, Jeff said. Jeff shut it down. <laughs> you definitely did, Jeff. It's all you. All right, well, speaking of Facebook, a lot of us, much of our lives is run by our smartphone. So do you have any idea how often you check it on any given day? Don't roll the prompter. I'm not looking. Okay, can you go back with the prompter? I saw okay. the number, but I was going to guess oh. anyway. Okay, what is it? My guess was going to be 94. How many times on average people check, check their, their phones? A hundred. Okay, you guys were close. 96 times, I'm sorry, yeah, 96 times a day. That's nearly Did that surprise once, you? I thought it'd be more. Mm, That's I once that. every 10 minutes. That's up 20% from research conducted just two years ago. What do you think about that? It, when you put a number to it, it sound, it's crazy. Yeah. You have, and you put it in every 10 minutes? Yeah, I know. Right? It's football weekend. I probably check mine 500 times this weekend. Right. But other than that, I don't really look at my phone. I've made it a thing in my household to pay attention to my family and not go on the internet. I'm telling you, when you stop social media, you don't even know where your phone is when you're at home. It's so it's so weird. How long did it take you to get over trying to check it? Like, if you left it somewhere, you did it deliberately, how often? Um, pretty quickly, because I wasn't liking exactly going back to the story we just talked about. I don't like what I see on social media, right? I like seeing my friends. I like seeing people I can't catch up with because I'm out of the bubble of Chicago or LA and I'm in Denver but some of the other things the comments underneath I I, I just want to do without it yeah it, it, it definitely it brings you down because sometimes when you'll see something that's definitely aimed what would always give me Jeff is when something is like really like a sweet post or something you know their kids going to first day of school or something and just somebody says something nasty yeah. Yeah. and unnecessary that kind of just it, it, it was taking a lot of air out of my my balloon so I, I never used that phrase before in my life the air out it's of the how balloon. old am I? And so, like, it really just, I, I kind of feel like, Jeff, I think people of our generation kind of tend to just stay away from it or go all in. Whereas it's surprising. I talk to my kids that are 12 and 13, and they're kind of, like, very savvy with it. They're like, oh, she's a troll. Anyway, and she, they just keep going. The they don't, is they don't go, why would they post that? They are so bored with trolls where we, we are like, well, then, well, what else does that mean? They don't really look at it. So I think the next generation won't be as affected by negative negativity as we are. But does that make them numb? You know what I mean? Is I that think it does. And I don't think that's necessarily true either, what he said. Because I think of the it suicidal is rates? People. Suicide rates are way up. It's directly uh, connected to social media. So I, I think there's a discussion there to be right. had. I, but I would argue that suicide is more, in, in, especially when it comes to our young women, since the invention of Barbie and before, women have been held to these impossible standards. Yeah, but the rates and are whether climbing. it was Yeah, whether it was Facebook or a magazine cover where there's a woman on there that you knew you could never look like, I think we it has been a constant attack on women's oh, self-esteem that has gone on forever and Facebook has just caught up and amplified it definitely. You didn't want to look like G.I. Joe? I, dude, we always knew that you we didn't have to. You guys just like G.I. Joe. All right, we've all heard <laughs> have of you quarters. Seen me with my shirt off? But what's that? Have you seen me with my shirt off? I have seen you with your shirt off. You look fantastic. I'm I sorry, feel like I HR. look like a bouncer at Easter today. <laughs> okay, you don't look like a <laughs> no? bouncer at Easter. Okay. All right, we've all heard of hoarders, but now there's a new form of hoarding, and it's digital. Mm. So three out of five people never delete pictures and videos from any of their devices, with most claiming their sentimental value attached to these files. So are you guilty of being a digital hoarder? Now, we all have the numbers of how many photos are in our phone. How many photos are in your phone right now? 9,000. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. What all right. about you? That doesn't make me feel so bad. 7,058. I'm at 6,804. Oh. But Kelly Schubert is at like 44,000. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that sounds like... <laughs> We need to stop the show and have an intervention. No, I don't think I've, I've done anything 44,000 times. <laughs> what could she possibly be taking pictures of? But what Kelly you, uh, also is good at Crime her detective? Okay, do you ever look back at your photos like your concert videos? For sure, you for do? sure. Yeah, I keep, my phone goes back like 10 years. That's you know, yeah. So that's why I have so many, but I don't have nonsense in there. You know, <laughs> like it, I go back and I clean it out like videos delete. Me but if it have my kids and stuff, I have so many of them. Right, know? yeah, and during the break, we gotta find out what Kelly's taking pictures of. We do, of. we that's do. That's very and strange. If, and, and let me know disturbing. if you ever watch your fireworks video again. That's so dumb. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why would you hate on fireworks? Because you're gonna see them and then do it and then what? Oh, Fire. coming up on TBL. <laughs> billionaire business mogul Mark Cuban is here. You have to see his response to Jeff's product idea. It's coming up. Can't miss it.
viewer asked us if COVID-19 infections caused myocarditis in just young men and women. We took it to two doctors, an infectious diseases expert, Dr. William Schaffner at Vanderbilt University's School of Medicine, and a cardiologist from Kaiser Permanente Healthcare Systems, Dr. Sadeep Saha. To answer it, we started with what is myocarditis? Myocarditis, otherwise known as inflammation of the heart. COVID infection can cause myocarditis. Both of our experts agreed one of the complications from COVID-19 infections is myocarditis. But as to who it affects... It tends to affect younger adults and teenagers and males more than females. I'm seeing in adults too. I'm an adult cardiologist and I'm seeing a fair number of patients in the hospital um, that have myocarditis as well due to COVID-19. So yes, COVID-19 infections can cause inflammation of the heart. And while it tends to happen to younger people, our experts say they're seeing it in adult cases as well. Now, myocarditis hasn't just been seen in people infected with COVID-19. We've also seen it, unfortunately, as a rare side effect of getting the vaccine. Welcome back to DBL. Think you got what it takes to swim with the sharks? Earlier, we talked with Mark Cuban about the new season of Shark Tank premiering this Friday, and I got a chance to pitch an idea of my own. You won't believe what he had to say on today's Chatting with the Stars. The billionaire space race is on. We've talked about, the sh uh, talked about it on the show. There's a lot of opinions out there. Are you going to be launching yourself into space soon, <laughs> or do you think it's a waste of resources? Well, one, I'm not going to be launching myself into space. I'm terrified of heights. Oh. Two, I've got an investment in a company called Relativity Space, which actually uses enormous uh, multi-story high 3D printers to print rockets. And so I think it's a valid um, use of resources because we want to explore. You know, you, we want to see where we can go in, in the universe. And don't think of it as just now. Think of it a hundred years from now, where can we possibly be? Not only on other planets or the moon, but you also have to think relative to what might happen to Earth, because we're not treating it as nicely right. as we should. And so while some of these things might seem outrageous and self-indulgent, if you look at it purely from a science and a, a deep into the future perspective, I'm glad we're doing it. Amen. Um, first of all, I'm a Trekkie, so I believe in space exploration, and I totally get you. But I you, thank you, my friend. Live long and prosper. But I have, I have a hard time with taxes, and I'm just going to ask you really straight up here. You've made headlines recently sure. about them. We're going to ask you, why are some people so against paying their fair share of taxes, especially the ultra-rich in which you were a part of? I don't think people, at least for me, I've, I wrote a blog post years ago, and I've said it many times, that after military service, the most patriotic thing you can do is pay your taxes. Exactly. So I have that. no problem paying taxes. And, you know, you can raise my taxes more. Where I start to get, where I start to take a different stance is when you start taxing non-earned income, right? Because if you start taxing what's happening in the stock market, stocks go up and stocks go down, and it can create a lot of unintended consequences. But if you, I think their current proposal is 39.5% for regular income. I'm fine with that all day long. Corporate income tax at 25 to 28 percent. I'm fine with that all day long. Um, it's just when you get into non-earned income that I start to disagree with what's mm. going on. Cuban. It's <laughs> good. It's a good answer. No. I, I do, I, I do want to say this because I think when you get to a person of your status, there is, uh, you know, you become a character, not like a person. But I worked in the NBA arena for uh, an NBA arena for five years. You were a man that behind the scenes talked to everyone, Aww. was so pleasant. So I just want to throw that out there Very because nice. we always say terrible things Appreciate about that. people. <laughs> uh, so I just want to throw that out. But, so tell us about the new season of Shark Tank, which premieres Friday, October 8th. What was the craziest pitch you heard? 
a million? So, so many. But I'll tell you one that was just like incredible. Um, there's a product that comes on that is going to be in every medicine cabinet within Ooh, the next oh. five to ten years that affect that it cures hiccup. <gasps> it's the crazy. Hiccups? Yes. Like what? imagine never having to deal with hiccup problems at all. Oh my god. Got all the science and all the research behind it. I'm not going to tell you who got the deal, but I was in the mix of fighting. How? It was incredible. Wow. Incredible. How do you? My grandfather That's had the hiccups for a week. It was like, and did you try it, it Mark? It's crazy. Did you try? Is it like a ghost yes, in the bottle? Yes, I mean, I didn't have the hiccups at the time. <laughs> but no, I mean, no standing on your head, no holding your breath, okay. no jumping up and down on one foot. Whoa. They had all the research and all the data there, and it worked. That's brilliant. It cost $15. It is. So, Mark, let's have some fun, okay? You ready? I have an elevator pitch for you. You probably Whoa. never heard that before. You ready? <laughs> Go for it, Jeff. All right. Never. Ketchup. <laughs> mustard. Salsa. What do they all have in common? Well, I'm gonna tell you. They are delicious condiments that you can find anywhere, from grocery stores to stadiums, Mark. But what's missing? <laughs> you talked about yep. medicine cabinets. I'm gonna tell you what's missing from the table. Uh oh. Big Jeff's Sardi Jardinero. Yeah! This mouth-watering symphony of pickled vegetables is one condiment you cannot live without, Mark. Once you try Sardi's Jardinera, you'll understand why. You can put it on pasta, salads, hot dogs, sandwiches, even a Cuban. <laughs> Jardinera is a well-known staple in Chicago yes. where over a million pounds are sold each year. But Mark, I want to take it national and make some money. So what do you say? How much you want to invest? <laughs> Why are you already selling this? You know, I'm get out there and sell it, Jeff. Mark, get, yeah, why aren't you selling it? Honestly, where do I start? Do I sell it at farmer's markets? Do I do it online? Should I sell it through my social yeah. media? Where, where do I start? Yeah. All of them? All the above, you take the path of least resistance. You figure out a way to make some jars. You take them to a farmer's market. You make some that you can sell online through your social media or a website that you create, and you see what the response is. I can't tell you how many companies that have come on Shark Tank that started in farmer's markets and have grown to five, 10, 15, $25 million or more in sales. And that is such a great opportunity, Jeff. Just, you know, can it in your house to get started make those hundred jars take it to the farmers market and if you sell them and look at that and just come on dbl and just <laughs> pitch like a madman yes! <laughs> so how much are we talking here mark <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance <laughs> the, we got a bad connection jeff what did you say we got Hello? a hiccup we got a hiccup i got a cure yeah. for that <laughs> Mark, thank you so thank much you, for chatting with us. We really appreciate you. To our viewers, do not forget to catch the new season of Shark Tank on ABC, premiering Friday, October 8th. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. Bye, Mark. Thanks, guys. Appreciate <laughs> you having me on. Take care. Bye. We'll be right back. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by... Deborah said she had seen several reports stating COVID-19 is the number one cause of death for police officers this year, and she wants to know if it's true. So Deborah, let's verify. Is COVID-19 the leading cause of death for on-duty law enforcement officers in 2021? Our sources are Tony Whitmire, Chief of Police for the Lake City Police Department in Georgia, Chris Loftus, Director of Communications for Washington State Patrol, and two nonprofit organizations that track law enforcement line of duty deaths in the United States. Deaths tracked include correctional officers, military police, sheriff's deputies, and officers working in federal agencies with the authority to make an arrest. The Officer Down Memorial page considers COVID-19 the cause of death when it's determined an officer contracted the virus as a direct result of their duties. Police Chief Tony Whitmire said his department lost two out of a 16 officer department to COVID-19 within five weeks. I've been in this business a little over 40 years and I don't know that anything has uh, affected law enforcement like this has just because the um, pandemic was here and folks were uh, isolating and not going to work and, and all those kinds of things didn't mean that we still didn't have calls to answer and people that needed help. Eric Gunderson, a Washington State Patrol detective, lost his life to COVID-19 while he was traveling for work. We cannot isolate ourselves. Our business is the, people bus the people's business. Detective Gunderson's loss has, has just made it that much more real to us because it's, it's not just a, a statistic or a name on the news. It's, it's a person we know. 
As of September 29th, there have been 316 line of duty deaths in 2021. Of those deaths, nearly two thirds have been linked to officers contracting COVID-19 while on duty. So we can verify this as true. COVID-19 has been the leading cause of death for an on duty law enforcement officer in 2021. And the virus was also the leading cause of death for police officers in 2020. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Don't miss a day of DBL. Bold debates. Enough! Get real. Hot celebs. Happy fifth anniversary. That just sounded weird, actually. <laughs> and all the laughs. Okay, I'm done with it. <laughs> DBL is always all new every day. Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments. Jeff, you've got a ton about your jardinier. Addison says, how about your face on the jar? Be the face. Be the face. My grandparents are the face. Oh. They're the ones who came over on a boat from Italy with my mom, so they could get a little credit too. Let's you know? give them some credit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But we also love your face. DBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same Do you place. you love my tomorrow. face? Wow. I love your face. Well, I had to ask. 